I just like to make a very simple video on antifungal therapy, in particular itraconazole. Okay, I get asked this question a lot. Shall I use itraconazole for my mold illness and my biotoxin illness? Shall I use itraconazole before peptides? Shall I use itraconazole before binder therapy? Shall I use itraconazole after peptides? I've been struggling for three years. Can I use itraconazole? Is itraconazole gonna damage my kidneys? Is itraconazole gonna damage my liver? So you can see how, you know, using itraconazole and using antifungals, it can become pretty complex, but I would just like to sit and make a very simple video making this whole concept easier for anyone who is going through mold illness, biotoxin illness, and chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Okay, so what actually is itraconazole? Well, itraconazole, it's an antifungal prescription pharmaceutical drug, otherwise known as Spornox, which has the ability to kill multicellular yeast and mold. Okay, so there's a number of different antifungal drugs out there. There's niastatin, which can kill single cellular yeast, which would be candida. There's fluconazole, which is a stronger antifungal, but again, can only kill single cellular yeast. And then there is itraconazole, which is considered to be the strongest, which can kill multicellular yeast and fungus, such as mold spores. Now, itraconazole, it's definitely not the right decision for everyone with mold illness, biotoxin illness, and chronic inflammatory response syndrome. For example, if you are at the beginning of your journey, I would suggest that you try other therapies before moving on to itraconazole. Okay, so if you imagine the journey or the life cycle of someone with a biotoxin illness, they've been diagnosed, they've done a mycotoxin panel, they've had their human leukocyte antigen genetic test, and we can confirm that they have a defect on chromosome 6 that doesn't allow them to correctly detoxify biotoxins. So they've already gone past the diagnostic tools to qualify for treatment. Now, these people tend to be pretty chronically sick and they tend to have a few different symptoms, if not around eight or more symptoms. It can be very challenging. Now, I would always advise that these people work on rebuilding their system first before trying any long-term course of itraconazole. Now, I'm a very big proponent of itraconazole. I use itraconazole in my clients under the supervision of a trained medical doctor, seeing as itraconazole is a prescription-only pharmaceutical drug. So I'm a big proponent of itraconazole. I enjoy to use itraconazole, and there's many different ways and strategies that we can use itraconazole. The typical dose tends to be 200 milligrams a day, which is split into two times 100 milligram tablets a day. However, I like to play around with this and I don't always like to suggest using such a dosage. So an individual who's been diagnosed with mold illness and SIDS, I always think that they should try other therapies before moving into itraconazole therapy. Now, if you are someone who is highly, highly, highly treatment resistant, you are very treatment resistant. We've tried peptides, we've tried binders, we've tried supplements, maybe you even tried ozone therapy, maybe you've tried EBO2, which is extra corporeal blood washing. You've tried numerous different therapies and you're just not getting better and you feel that you have an internal colonization of living mold spores in your mucous membranes, which is most likely the ears, nose and throat, the gut and the lungs, then we can look into itraconazole. So itraconazole tends to only be used in a patient population that is highly treatment resistant. So not everyone needs itraconazole. For example, if you have a very high mycotoxin only load, so you just have mycotoxins, you may not need itraconazole because you only have the fungal toxins. However, if you feel intuitively, you tap in 
and you also confirm with diagnostic testing that you do actually have living mold spores. So there's a huge difference between a mycotoxin and a living mold spore. So just to clarify, a living mold spore is actually a living fungal cell, a multicellular living fungal cell, and a mycotoxin is not living, okay? It's just a toxin, okay? Like a heavy metal doesn't live, you know? Um, plastic doesn't live, a nano microplastic doesn't live. So a mycotoxin is just a toxin. If you think that you have an internal colonization, a living mold colonization in your gut, in your lungs, in your ENT, maybe living in some bad dental work that you may have had a few years ago, then you would be a candidate for itraconazole. Okay, so that's, you know, the general overview. I, I'm always a fan of using itraconazole. Um, I think it's a, a really great product. And also you can up ramp and off ramp and you can use herbal antifungals to up ramp and you can use herbal antifungals to off ramp and then you have to do you know biofilm busting phospholipid repair you do have to strategize itraconazole and you must always get your liver and your renal markers checked throughout the whole itraconazole course as well but i am a proponent of itraconazole and actually one of the key methods I learned about itraconazole was from Dr. Andrew Campbell and his lab, My Myco Lab. So I just wanted to, you know, give a reference there. Dr. Andrew Campbell, he has some excellent videos on itraconazole. So I was very grateful to learn about itraconazole therapy from him. So saying that, if, um, if you are treatment resistant and maybe you've tried peptides or you haven't tried peptides, you've tried supplements or you haven't, either way, if you are treatment resistant and you think itraconazole might be the right path for you, then get in touch and I would certainly like to talk to you about this. I would love to help you and I would love to actually dedicate some time to actually strategize how you can use itraconazole to help you overcome mold illness, biotoxin illness, and chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So thank you so much for watching. I will always put all of the references and everything I've learned and the key sources of where I've learned the information in the description below. And also you can find how to book with me in the description below as well. I do have calendar dates open for bookings. And you can also find my other social media. Um, I, I, uh, I post a lot as well on X and Instagram too, if you're just seeing me from YouTube, so you can keep up with my work there too. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you very soon.